In this clip, I want to explain Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm on graphs. Imagine the following situation. We have a map and we want to move from position A to position B, such as here in Nijmegen, where I live, to some zoo in Helmond. What is the shortest path to get there? Or if you're playing a game like tic-tac-toe, what is the quickest way to win? Or like examples in our course, given a label transition system, is some state reachable? Or is there a counterexample? And what is the shortest path to get to this counterexample? In situations like this, we need to traverse the graph systematically to find the shortest path. One way to do this is using Dijkstra's algorithm. This algorithm is invented in 1956 by Edsgeweg Dijkstra, and it is quite elegant. The principal idea of the algorithm is as follows. Suppose I have a node like this one, and the distance to get to that node was r. So we annotate the node with r. Next, we're going to traverse the graph using a bread first search. So we're going to the childs of r. So first node over here, child number one. What is the distance to get there? It's r, because we need to get to this node. And then it's this additional edge, so it's r plus one. And similar for this child over here. So we make a next step in the bread first search. So we move to this node over here. So to get to this node, it's r plus one plus this edge, so it's r plus two, and similar for all the others. So in fact, what we did was we annotated each edge with a value, namely its distance, in this case, one. So what would happen if we do not use distance one, but we generalize, so to any distance? So instead of having one, we have n, or we have m, or we have y. So instead, for this node, instead of having length r plus one, it is r plus this node n, so this edge n, so it's r plus 1. And we do this for all of them. Now consider the following situation. Here I have this node r plus m, and it also has an edge to this node r plus n plus x. It's on distance a. So what now is the shortest path to this node r plus n plus x? So what is the shortest path? Is it this r plus m plus a? Yeah, so r, m, a. Or is it still r, n, x? So which of the two do you choose? Well, you want to have the shortest. So if r plus m plus a is the shortest, then you change this and you change it to r plus m plus a. So this is the principal idea of the access algorithm. In code, the algorithm looks as follows. The algorithm is based on a breadth first search. It takes as input a weighted graph and to a start node a. And remember, this is a weighted graph, so that means that edges are triples. It goes from some source node to some target node with some distance. So it's a triple source, distance, target. In the algorithm, we keep two variables per node, namely its distance, and that is the shortest distance up to now, and the parent, the predecessor that gave the shortest distance. Initially, we don't know what the distance is for each node, so we initialize the value to infinity. And the same holds for, for the parent, we don't know, so we set it to nil. To start, and we start at node A, so we give distance A zero. And we want to traverse all vertices, so we make some Q and we put all vertices in it. And while this Q is not empty, we're going to find the element with the smallest distance. So the next element in the Q that is the smallest possible, and we call this node B. And then we're going to look for each edge that starts at B to some node C with some distance. So BC is the arc, and the weight is D. So we're going to check if the new distance, namely the distance to get in B, plus the distance of the arc, D, if that is smaller than the distance in C, then we update the distance C with a new distance, namely distance B plus D. And we update the parent accordingly, namely to B. And we repeat this until the queue is empty. So this is the algorithm. Let's apply it on an example. So let's apply the algorithm. We create a table first. The first element is pi for parent. And then we list all the nodes of the graph. So S, A, B, C, D, E, and T. Next, we look to the distances. So the distance from S to S is zero. And for all the others, it is infinite because we initialize. So we start looking into the, into the node that has the smallest value. 
that is s s with value zero. So this is the lowest one. So we started s. Remember that was distance zero, and we looked at all the nodes that we can reach from s. So in our case, it is a, c, and e. a is with distance seven, so zero plus seven is seven. Node c is zero plus one is one. And e, for e we have s, 0, plus 3 is 3. And all the others are still infinite. So b is infinite, d is infinite, and t is infinite. And s we already had. So now we look at the smallest value in the table, and that is 1 for node c. So we take c as an experiment. Remember that was value 1. And we're going to look to the nodes that we can reach from c. And that is d and e. For d we get the, the distance 3, so 1 plus 3 is 4. And for node e we have 1 plus 1 is 2, so value 2. Remember that for a we already had 7, b we couldn't reach so it's still infinite, c we already had, and t is still infinite. Next we're going to look to the, to the node with the smallest value in the table, and that is e, value 2. So we take node e, remember we got it with value 2, and we're going to look to the child that we can reach from e. In our case that's d with uh, 1 and node t with value 10. So for d this is 2 plus 1 is 3, and for node t this is 2 plus 10 is 12. And remember a is still 7 and b is still infinite. c and e are already done. So next step, we look to the smallest value, and that is in this case d. So we take node d, that has value 3. And there are several siblings that we can reach. We can reach a, b, and t. So for a, we have 3 plus 3 is 6. So we have value 6 for node a. For b, we have 3 plus 6 is 9. And for node t, we have 3 plus 8 is 11, which is smaller than 12, hence we need to write down 11. Okay, now we're going to look for the next node. In this case, that's node a, so we choose node a. Remember, we got a with value 6. Now, from a, we can get to c and b. But to c, we already had a value, namely 1. So we can't reach it with a shorter value. For b, we have 6 plus 2 is 8, which is smaller than 9, and for b, we reach it with 8. So that one is 8, and we still have 11 from node t. All the other nodes have been visited. So the smallest value is now node b, with value 8. So the next parent is b, remember that was with value 8. And from 8, from value b, we can go to t with 1. So that's 8 plus 1 is 9, so we, to t we reach it with value 9. And now we're done because we are t with value 9 and there are no other nodes to be visited. Hence, the shortest path from s to t is 9. So how did we get to node t with value 9? Let's use the table. We first look up in column t. How did we get there with 9? So we look up the first occurrence of 9 and we see that this corresponds to parent b. So we walked from parent or from B to T. How did we get it in B? Again, we look up in the table, we look in column B, look for the lowest value 8, and we see that the first occurrence is node A. So we walked from A to B. How did we get in A? Again, we look up the lowest value, which is 6, and we got there via node D. So we walked from D to A. How did we get in D? Again, we look up in column D. We see the lowest value 3, and we see that we came here via E. Hence, we walked from E to D. Similarly, in column E, we see that we walked, that the shortest path was from C. So we walked from C to E. And in C, we got via S. Hence, the shortest path is from S to C, to E, to D, to A, to B, and to T. 
This concludes the example of the exercise algorithm. Good luck with the exercises.